Are you standing up yet? Wow, if that didn't light your fire, then your wood is wet. Somebody has well said. Glad to have you with us on the show. Appreciate you being here. My name's Dean Renfro. And today we've been talking about the countdown for freedom. The countdown for freedom. And just a just a three days from now, on July the 4th, we as Americans celebrate our independence. The fact that we broke free from numerous things. We broke free to be free people. We broke free to form, as we talk about, a nation. A nation where we could live in freedom. And we have celebrated that for 200 plus years as, the, as this opportunity given to us to cherish and to celebrate and to defend if necessary. Well, it's come that time in the world where we, we find that constantly freedom is being attacked. We're attacked, we're attacked against freedom to, to, to keep us from freedom in our own minds, in our own homes, in our own neighborhoods, in our own cities, and in our nation, and even in the world. Freedom is something that many people despise, even though they want it, because they want it on their terms. But freedom doesn't come on your own terms. It comes with a set of concepts and ideas that you must move toward. It begins in your mind and your heart as you move toward this concept of freedom. Matter of fact, there's five pillars that I'm going to talk about later this week that are necessary for, for freedom. But we've been talking about, we've been talking about this whole concept of countdown to freedom. So so let's 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 real quick review where we've been. In the formation of the Constitution, our forefathers, the founders, wrote, We the people. We the people, the primary element of the Constitution is we the people. It's not we the government. It's not we the elected representatives. It's not we the world. It's not we the United Nations. It's not we the World Health Organization. It's not we this party, we that party. It's we the people. We the people of the United States. One of the biggest threats in the world. One of the biggest implements that we face is people want to divide us as Americans. They want to divide us by Americans by giving us names. Like you're this kind of American and you're that kind of American and and, and you're 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 you know and you're this class of American and you're that class of American. No, we're Americans. We're Americans first. We the people of the United States. See when they can divide us by classifications social classification, racial classification, economic classification, language classification. When they can divide us, we're no longer united. The Book of Wisdom says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Wow. The importance of being we the people of the United States first began the idea in order to form a more perfect union, a more perfect unitedness, a more perfect togetherness, a better perfect togetherness. Not a perfect in the fact that there won't be problems, not a perfect in the fact they will always have it together, not a perfect that it's going to be sinless or wrongless, but a concept of idea of a mature union, a, 
a completed union, a together union. That was the first stage. Those first founding group of people, those first 13 colonies, they were perfect. They had their own problems. They had their own struggles. They had them socially. They had them economically. They had them they had them racially. They had them, they had them every which way. They had them in the environment. They had they were struggled, but they decided we can do this together as we the people, as we the people. Then we talked about the fact that the first order that needed to happen was to establish justice. See, we're a country of laws. Of, of, of guidelines, of rules, of, of things that we have written out, said these are important to have a civilized and united people. People oftentimes forget that. The first thing that happens to almost every one of us is that we believe that we're the exception to the rule. How many times have we said, yeah, but you don't understand. I, I didn't have a choice. Or how many times have we said, well, I, I thought nobody would notice. Or then we, you know, there's always that, I didn't know card. And oftentimes we don't know all the laws. Oftentimes we don't know how the application of law occurs. And so we think somebody's picking on us. We think somebody is trying to suppress us. Because we don't know the law. And it's their fault, right? No, to establish justice. That same book of wisdom that says a house divided against itself will fall also says that it is righteousness, justice, that exalts a country, a nation, and wickedness casts it down. That is, lays it flat, lays it bare, destroys it. All throughout our history, there's, there's been wars over the justice concept. We even internally, between the United States, went to war over justice. Brother against brother, family against family, state against state. To try to, to, try to bring about uh, justice in our world. Regardless of what you think the the what regardless of what you think the outcome would have should have been or could have been, whether you like the outcome or not, we we as a United States came to an agreement that this is how we would live. And it made us stronger. It made us more united. Oh sure, there's been there's been people and there's still people today that want to divide the idea of that justice. They still want to promote the 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 false thinking of that day still want to promote the ideology that somehow or another one people can be better than another people that one person has more rights to something than another person but see we decided we would be a nation of laws of of justice we would we would have a way to help people learn to be just and righteous by following the law. When we get outside of that bounds. We, we created parameters for that. But not only that. We, we found ourselves in the middle of, of other people's skirmish for justice. Other people trying to be free. For other people trying to suppress people. We found ourselves in this battle of justice. We call them wars. We survived two world wars. And several world skirmishes over freedom and justice. Freedom and justice. So today we come to our we come to our third come to our third concept inside the Constitution as our as our founding fathers laid that together as they begin to craft the words in their mind and coming from their hearts. This, this concept of what, what should these unite, what should we, the people of the United States, 
what should be of utmost importance to us is unity, is justice. And then they brought in uh, a word we don't use much today, but we understand it's derivative to ensure domestic tranquility. You may know that word tranquility as peace. So we've got being together. We've got justice and we've got the right to live in peace without being at odds at home. The word domestic is the idea here in these United States, here in my house, here in my, in my neighborhood, here in my community, here in my city, here in my state, here in my nation, the right to be at peace among ourselves. That is a valuable, that is a valuable statement for us. That is a valuable mindset. That is a valuable heart value is that we have the right to live at peace. We all know what it's like. We've all lived there. We've all been there when there's turmoil. Usually that turmoil starts in here, in our minds. And we get at odds against ourselves. I talk about on the morning wake-up call, my podcast, The Morning Wake-Up Call, which you can find at themorningwakeupcall.com. I've been talking about this trek that people have to take up over Fear Mountain so they can find freedom on the other side. But the, the greatest disruptor, the greatest disruptor around them, whether it was those people who intend well for us who 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 basically instilled fear in us over and over by telling us, be careful, you can't do that. That's so not you. That that doesn't fit you and, 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 and bred fear into us to step outside the bounds. Or those people who came along who tried to encourage us to just not work so hard and, 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 and just take it easy. It'll all come to you. And then those people who are wicked and cruel and mean and and the further we go up the mountain and the closer we get to the top, want to destroy us because if we go over, that means they could go over, but they don't want to go over. They want to control people on Fear Mountain because as long as they have fear controlling people, they can contain them. But those people who walk over Fear Mountain to the other side are free and they have peace and they promote peace. Their mind gets at peace. So the first place we find that there's turmoil is usually in us. Oftentimes created by us. By what we let ourselves believe. By what we let somebody else tell us. What we, what we let a society of people feed us. And that turmoil begins inside. And then as we, we move forward, we oftentimes find turmoil in our own home. It's called teen, being a teenager, right? If you're a parent, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about when, when I talk about teenagers. There's this turmoil. What, what's the whole turmoil in the teenage years all about? Right? It's about finding your freedom. Being able to be responsible and be on your own. Or somebody giving you the opportunity to step outside right, and, and, and be there and be on your own and stand up for yourself. Oftentimes we create our own turmoil in that environment, whether as parents or as, as young people, as teenagers. Sometimes that turmoil is, is found in, in, the, in, our, in our society because people have decided that they will determine for other people what what life is supposed to be like and and how peace is supposed to happen in their life because as long as you're on my side you're on the right side and we create turmoil but we believe that we should be able to live in peace domestic tranquility but we also knew to be a united states to be a we the people of unity and justice and peace would have to defend it. We would have to defend it together. 
we would have to defend it because we have a we have common values because we have a united heart and a united spirit that these things are important they are invaluable nowhere else on the planet does it exist that we would have to defend that sometimes we find ourselves having to defend that against people right here at home people who have decided that that know that 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 we all should share in each other's whatever we got stuff know that we should all all have to to, to bow down to to an elite group of people who who know best for us who live off in some foreign place on the other side of our country and want to tell us this is how you should live life but i don't have to see we we our founding fathers were were brilliant they understood because they lived in it that we would have to have a common defense to protect ourselves even internally to protect ourselves against ourselves but they also knew that we would have to have a common defense a togetherness the willingness to stand up and be together to, to fight for that unity to fight for that justice to fight for that tranquility that peace against people on the outside that would hate us for it, that would despise us for it, that want to destroy us for it, that we would have to stand up. That we would have to stand up. So, we the people of the United States, in order to ensure domestic tranquility, provide for a common defense it's so important hey thanks for being with us today thank you for being a part of today's countdown for freedom i hope you find i hope you find that the process that that we go through in the formation of our country what was it was a really big deal was it was an important concept we we may not understand it all we may not feel like we get it all. We may not even feel like it's happening like we think it ought to happen. But you ask anybody from somewhere else in the world where people are leaving all that they have in their, their place that they live, all that they've lived with and for, to come to America. Why do they do that? Why do they do that? Why are they willing to, to leave their world, to, to literally sometime crawl here, to, to spend every penny they have, even come here broke, to be here for the promise of freedom, for the promise to be a person that's, that, that has value for us. Uh, the concept and idea that we live in and that we call the United States. We have a symbol for that United States. See, we have a symbol for that unitedness that we believe in. We have a symbol for that pursuit of justice. We have a symbol for that desire and drive to have peace we have a symbol for that common defense we have a symbol for that it's called the flag the flag of the united states of america wherever it's raised wherever it is put up the world knows that stands for a place where there's freedom. Will you let freedom ring today? Will you let freedom ring? Will you rise up 
and protect this precious spot on the face of this ball that's floating around in space. Will you rise up to keep it the United States? Will you rise up for it to be we, the people? Will you do that? You'll have an opportunity, especially this July 4th. So go out and get your flag up. Go out and get your patriotic shirt. Go out and begin to plan a conversation. Go buy those stars and stripes, paper plates and napkins and cups. Get your patriotic hat. And start talking about we the people. Start talking about peace and freedom. Start talking about justice by the fact of the law, that we're a, a, a nation of laws and they matter. Start talking about the fact that to be free, we have to defend it. And to quote one of those great defenders as we sign off, who, who understood it, with his very pen stroke, but also with his life. Give me liberty or give me death. Isn't that valuable? Hey, you see you next time tomorrow on the countdown for freedom.